Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, I put this video up about a week ago saying that I had 100 PC boards in stock for the electronic lead screw and that they were available for sale. I also said I had no idea how long they were gonna last. Well, it turns out I am already out of stock. In fact, they sold out in two and a half hours. And uh, I, I'm just overwhelmed by that. I had no idea what the, uh, what the response was gonna be and what the level of interest was gonna be. I am very pleased to see how many people are interested in the project. Um, but yeah, the 100 boards didn't last very long. Don't worry. I do have more on the way. Uh, they are currently in the fab right now. They're in production. And as soon as I have more boards, I will uh, make those available and I'll post at least in the community section on the YouTube channel just to let you all know that boards are available. Now, just to set reasonable expectations here, I do have a day job. And if I list 1,000 or 10,000 boards on eBay and they all sell, I am gonna be completely buried in shipping. So I am gonna continue doing them in batches, probably of 100. As soon as I have the next batch of 100 up, I'll let you all know. And don't worry, if those all sell out, I'll get more. Uh, so at some point, even if I'm ordering more from the fab, I'm probably still going to put them up in batches at least until the sales stabilize just so that I can keep up with the shipping. In the meantime, I have been working on the documentation that I promised. This is the GitHub project for the electronic lead screw. And there has been some documentation here for a while, just kind of showing the pins that are in use and some of the details of how to set up the switches and how to configure the uh, firmware on the electronic lead screw. But it's not particularly user-friendly. This has been more for people who kind of know their way around this kind of hardware. But I've been working on something that is a little more detailed and a little more user-friendly. So down here, there's a link under the documentation heading. It just says, please visit the project wiki. Or you can go up here to the top of the project, and there's a tab for the wiki. And on the wiki page, this is where I am assembling the documentation. I've got a list of the stuff you'll need if you want to build an electronic lead screw for your lathe. Uh, some instructions for wiring everything together, some pointers to details about how to program the microcontroller, and a troubleshooting page that's just uh, empty right now, but I'll be filling that out. So if we look at the Stuff You'll Need page, I've got a list of all the things that you need in order to put an electronic lead screw together for your lathe. Now I have this broken into two parts, sort of standard parts that anyone who builds one of these is gonna need, and then lathe specific parts that you'll need to choose based on what kind of lathe you are adding the lead screw to. So for standard parts, you need the TI microcontroller, you need the interface board, and this is the board that I'm, I'm selling. I have a few of the, I've got more of these in the fab and they'll be back soon and available. You'll need the uh, LED display and keypad board, and you'll need a five volt power supply to run these electronics. And I have links over here for where you can buy these. And full disclosure, any of these that have a star on them are affiliate links. Um, if you use those links to make a purchase, I do get a small commission. It doesn't affect your pricing at all. The second part of the list here is lathe specific parts. You're going to need an encoder, a motor and driver, and a power supply to run the driver and the motor. Now, these are the parts that I used. I converted a Grizzly G0602 benchtop lathe. That's a 10 by 22 inch class lathe. And these parts are working pretty well for me. If you're converting that lathe, this would be a great place to start in terms of recommendations. I am not going to make specific recommendations for specific other lathes that I don't have access to just because I don't have them, and so I don't really have any way of knowing what's appropriate for them. That's something that you'll need to figure out, or you need to talk to other people who have done the conversion on a similar kind of a lathe. Now, I use this NEMA 23 hybrid servo and driver running on 48 volts, and that's worked okay for me with a three to one belt drive, as I've showed in the previous videos. If you have something different, you'll probably need to figure out a different combination here. 
I've talked to people who are doing mini lathes and uh, using like a, a smaller, much smaller motor for those all the way up to um, one person that's got a giant uh, old school, like a hundred inch plus lathe who's looking at a thousand dollar AC servo potentially to, to run it. And uh, the microcontroller and electronics should all work fine with that, but it's going to take a very large power supply and servo to run a big lathe like that. I've also got some information down here, just general stuff on steppers versus servos versus hybrid servos, uh, digital versus analog, stepper drivers, and switching and linear power supplies that might be useful if you're trying to figure out what you need for your lathe. So that's the parts. Uh, the next thing here that I have is, if we just go back, is uh, instructions for wiring everything together. Now, this is something that a lot of this is going to be details you're going to need to figure out in terms of what kind of cabling and what kind of connectors that you want to use. But this page should give you the basics. So the first thing here is instructions for setting up the launch pad, because once you install this, you can't get to the switches easily. There are a couple of switches and some jumpers. I covered this in a previous video, but here it is all written. You can click on the uh, photo here to get to a much bigger one and it shows in detail which switches need to be set and in what positions and which jumpers need to be removed. Then below that is a wiring diagram showing how everything is connected. And of course this is figurative. Uh, some of these cables are longer and you're going to have to figure out how this stuff fits into your lathe. The most important thing here is to note this vertical line separating the high voltage system from the low voltage system. On the low voltage side, we've got a five volt power supply running the microcontroller, the display, and the encoder. On the high voltage side is the separate power supply driving the servo or stepper. And it is important to keep these uh, two halves of the system separate. The inputs over here on the, uh, on the driver are going to be optically isolated, meaning the signals come in here, they drive LEDs that ultimately are coupled into the rest of the electronics. There's no electrical connection between the high voltage motor power and the low voltage logic power. And we want to keep it that way because the power system over here is going to be extremely noisy and the power system on the logic side needs to be very quiet. The spikes generated by the motor could easily cause interference or even safety issues if these systems get crosswired. I did hear from one person who was having a lot of trouble with noise in the system, and the problem was that they had connected the logic ground for the logic to the ground for the motor supply, and that was causing noise to flow between the halves of the system and was causing issues. And once they separated the grounds, it started working. So that is important to keep these two halves of the system separate. Most everything is labeled on the PC board, so the connection should be obvious, but um, this diagram should help if you have any questions. And then down below there are just some notes, and I would definitely read through this before you begin. And here's one, do not connect the high voltage and low voltage grounds. Um, here's another interesting thing, keep the display cable as short as possible. So that's the connection here between the PC board and the display PC board. I have these in separate enclosures for my installation, but you wanna keep this cable as short as possible because the cable's gonna have capacitance and because these are open drain or open collector, uh, single wire serial protocols, um, you can run into problems if the cable is too long. If that happens, your display just won't work or it'll be erratic or the input buttons won't work and you can try shortening the cable if you run into that issue. Uh, keeping the high voltage and the low voltage parts of the system as far apart as part as far apart as practical is something you're going to want to do. And again, you just don't want to take the signals for the encoder or the signals for the display and bundle those cables up with the high voltage cables going to your step, stepper or servo motor. You're just asking for trouble if you run those parallel. And there's some other notes in here about shielding and about how the common positive works on the stepper and servo driver. So I think that's about it as far as the documentation. There is a link here for programming the microcontroller and this is to the video that I did on that topic. 
And then there's a troubleshooting page here, and I'll be filling this out as I encounter people with issues and we work through them and solve them. We'll share those results here so that other people can benefit. Um, for now, uh, you know, I do have a day job. Uh, this is not something that I do full time. I will try to provide whatever support I can. If you have questions um, and you're not able to get answers through YouTube comments or through other channels, feel free to come over here into the issues and put in a new issue. Uh, mostly this is going to be used to track development progress on the software, but people throw questions in here all the time at, when they encounter issues. I will try to respond as I can. Please be patient with me. Like I said, I have a day job um, and this is a sideline for me. But, you know, other people can jump in and discuss here as well. So if you have any issues, go ahead and drop an issue in here. I'll get to it as soon as I can. And if uh, it's something that looks like uh, something that we want to share with other people, I'll go ahead and put that over in the wiki as well under the troubleshooting so that other people can benefit from it as well. Well, that's all I have for you today. More boards are coming, and I'll post that as soon as I have them. If you are enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.